So iPads versus Wacom tablets, which one is right for you in your graphic design, in your illustration, in your sketching, in that digital concepting mode that you want to be in? A lot of times people don't want to get into the sketchbook because then you have to maybe scan it, take a picture of it, get it in, and then you have to really go over the sketches that you made anyway. So why not sketch directly on the screen or directly on the Wacom tablet? But the question is, which one's right for you? So let's jump into the video right now. Before we do, if you're curious about the exact models and the products I'm talking about in the video, head down into the description below, check those out. Those are affiliate links, so if you do use those links, uh, it will give me a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, which is what keeps these videos out coming out to you. So I always appreciate when you all use those links. The first thing I wanna talk about is the usability of each of these devices. So Wacom tablet versus iPad iPad is something I find that is really, really good on the go. So if you're somebody who either commutes by train or a bus or Uber, um, you will want to use an iPad because you can just hold it in your arm, do your sketches, it's really easy, it's not cumbersome to lug around. Um, but then again, if you use a Wacom tablet hooked up to a computer on a bus, I feel like you're either gonna get some crazy looks, somebody's gonna get really mad at you, or you just simply won't have the room to do it. Um, so that's one thing you really wanna consider is the usability of the device. Um, now, is there a difference between sensitivity and how the pen reacts on the surface? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, the Wacom tablet I find is gonna be the absolute best as far as pressure sensitivity and accuracy because I mean, that's what these tablets are built for. They're professional grade tablets. They're very well built. They've been doing this for years. Um, whereas iPads are a lot newer to the scene relatively. They have great accuracy, um, great sensitivity, as you see on the screen. Um, it's got good touch and pressure sensitivity. Um, but then again, it's just a newer product, so it's not gonna have those finite nuances that the Wacom tablet has. Um, now, what's the feel compared from iPad to Wacom tablet? Well, Wacom's gonna have more of an organic feel, I say, you know, more of a paper and pencil feel. It has a bit of a rougher texture, on the Wacom tablet surface. So when you pull the pen across it, it has that paper-like feel. Now, not 100%, but it's a great hybrid between digital and actual paper. Now, as far as the iPad's concerned, uh, you're gonna have a little bit stickier of a feeling, like it's gonna have some grip, but it's gonna be a stickier grip because the screen is obviously shinier, glossier, so that's the experience you're gonna have between the two. Now, ergonomics of using these two devices. This is something that I find very important. As a graphic designer, I think health is often overlooked on the day-to-day, -day. for instance, posture. So are you keeping your shoulders back? Are you looking level at the screen? Um, are your hands and arms rested at 90 degree angles? Um, this is very important because I sit at a screen anywhere from eight to 10 hours a day. Uh, it's just a lot of time, it's nature of the beast. And so you wanna make sure you're holding good posture or you're quickly gonna get your neck, your shoulders, or your back totally out of line. The Wacom tablet allows you to do this because you can set it on your desk, get your screen set up at eye level, rest your arms, and everything is in place so you don't get your posture all out of control. With an iPad, I find that a lot of times I'm wanting to like lean over it, kind of hunch over, like look at it or lay it on my desk and lean over it. And so the, what I find when you're leaning over a device is that it throws out your back, your arms, you know, your neck is all kind of scrunched. Um, and so it just doesn't yield to good posture. I think that's something that's actually really important. I don't think that should be something overlooked when making a buying decision between a Wacom or an iPad. Now, if you're somebody who's on the go a lot, obviously the iPad is just gonna be the, the obvious choice. But if you have a pretty solid desk setup, if you aren't traveling a lot or you're driving yourself or you're cycling to work, whatever it may be, um, the Wacom may be best, you know, do some quick sketches and then get to the office and, and really flesh out the idea digitally. These are just some key points I want you to be thinking about when you're making a buying decision. Um, but right now, tell me, which one are you considering between? Are you considering the iPad or the Wacom tablet according to what we've been talking about so far? So comment below right now, um, Wacom or iPad. Tell me what you're thinking of getting. So the last thing I wanna talk about is overall usability. Now, it just goes without saying that the iPad has far more uses than a Wacom tablet. A Wacom tablet is truly for somebody who's in a professional setting, who wants to really hammer out some good illustrations, some good logo designs, some good sketches, some amazing digital painting. Um, and then the iPad is somebody who has a lot more uses. Maybe they're doing presentations so they can use that for their PowerPoint slides. 
Um, they're sketching on the go, they're surfing the internet, they're just doing a lot more tasks. And so there's a value difference there. Do you want the most accurate in what the machine is built to do? Or do you want an iPad and it can be used to sketch on? So that's something that's really important to consider. The Wacom tablet is built for illustrating, it is built for sketching, it is built for digital painting, it is built for logo design and rendering out your concepts. And so that is what it is made for. The iPad, that's a use for it. Uh, and so it's not completely built to do that. So this is, this is something that I really think I just want to leave you with, with your buying decision. Again, links in the description below for these products I talked about during the video. And I'm really grateful when you use those. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I thank you for tuning into this episode and I'll see you here on the next one.